This is a very short video to show how to do a grayscale shader uh, using post-processing in Unity, using shader and some C-sharp code. A couple of lines of C-sharp code. Anyway, let's get started after the fade. What we have here is a scene with three objects in it. So we get red, green, and blue. And they're set up this way with a black background and the yellow foreground, or the yellow ground, I guess. Uh, because I want to um, do a, a grayscale um, shader. So what I'm going to do is uh, create, a, uh, let's create a separate folder here. So we'll call this shaders. And I'm going to create a new shader. Um, and that shader is going to turn whatever we show in the camera to be a grayscale. So this is handy if you want it to have like kind of old timey film, black and white, that kind of idea. Uh, and we're going to use a specific formula for that, and I'll, I'll explain that in just a sec. So I'm just going to create a shader here, if I can find it. Why can I never find shader? Where is it? Shader. Okay, here we go. Um, and we'll just have this as a standard surface shader, unlit shader, unlit shader. That's the one we want. Unlit shader. So we're going to call this grayscale. So that's the grayscale shader. Uh, and we also need to create a script file as well. So we're going to do create. Um, and then this is going to be um, inside scripts. And we'll call this post process. <clears throat> and we just need one shader in this one. So um, I'm going to just set this up really quickly. This is very similar to the the uh, the other post process that I created in the circle wipe video, and I'll put a link to that just up there. Shader, shader, uh, and then start. I'm going to say need to have a private material material and say material equals new material uh, shader so we do that there and then inside our on render image so we can get rid of update there we say private void on render image uh, we want to do graphics dot lit and then the source which is going to be our source uh, destination which is going to be our destination and then we want to specify the shader so we're going to use the material because that's what wraps the, the the shader in unity okay um, and to add that to the camera all we do is we just grab the main camera there and then I'll move this over here and we just drag that onto there and we have our shader which is none so I'm going to add that just now. So I'm going to add our grayscale shader, which does nothing just yet, but we're going to get to that. And then we press play. And so it does nothing. <laughs> There's no change to it whatsoever. Um, but we can change things if we jump into here. Uh, this is our shader here. So the only thing that we're doing is we're going to be, uh, it's going to return the, the color uh, and we apply the fog. We don't really need the fog here, so I can just get rid of that. Uh, but if we specify uh, this is fixed for uh, like that, so if I specify that, uh, so that's saying take the color, and I'll explain this in just a sec, sorry. Uh, take this color, put it inside here, and then return it. So for every pixel, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to return black for every pixel. So when we run this, I don't think it works inside there, but if we press play in, on here, you see that everything now renders as black. Now the way that happens, the way that we get the color from the, the texture, which is what things are being rendered, because as part of the pipeline, uh, you're taking things that are in 3D, um, and then the, the render pipeline takes those things in 3D and then basically paints them on a flat texture, because our monitors are flat. So eventually it ends up as a, as a XY coordinate. So we use this sampler here, um, which is this bit here, which is our, our texture. And we get the UV coordinates from there. Uh, and that gets us a color. 
So what we actually want to do is we want to return just the color for each of the separate parts of it, the RGB parts of it. So we can, you can see what we can do if you if we do um, fixed for uh, red only equals fixed for and then because it's RGBA it's going to be X Y Z W. So if we do uh, call dot R, sorry call dot X call dot y call dot z call dot w uh, and we return that back when we press play here we're going to get the exact same thing but if we start switching things around so instead of x y and z we maybe change that to y uh, x so we switch the first two now watch what happens. You see that the colors have subtly changed there and that's because the, the red and green components have switched around and we get even crazier if we actually do switch them around so that they're backwards. So now you can have crazy colors like that. So how does that get us to our grayscale? Well, the grayscale formula is actually this, it's based on, on the NTSC, but it's essentially um, almost a third of red plus almost um, two thirds of green plus a little bit of blue. And we're gonna use that formula to determine the X, Y, uh, to determine the RGB value that we're gonna output. So I'm gonna move this to the, the other monitor here. So instead of red only, we're gonna have a fixed, um, for B and W equals fixed four, and then it's going to be our red, which is our X, multiplied by 0 0.299. Um, oh no, we're adding this together. What am I doing? Okay, uh, this is going to be a floating point number, so that's going to be. Um, float um, in ten city equals call dot x times zero point two nine nine plus call dot y times zero point five eight seven plus uh, call dot z times zero point four four. 114 and that gets us our intensity and then we just pass back intensity 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 uh, one well actually we can do call dot w just to be if we have transparency maybe we need that uh, and then we return back b and w so now what we're doing is we're saying, okay, take the values of the X, red, Y, green, Z, blue, multiply them by their component intensities. That gives us our ratio um, of each color as a single floating point number between zero and one. We then uh, return, oh, it should be fixed four. We return those values just as intensity, intensity, intensity for the RGB values, and then we just leave whatever the alpha is. So, uh, let me run this. Oh. You get one of these wrong. Okay, that's better. Um, and now when we run this, we get our grayscale, and that's it. Um, that's all there is to it. Okay, well, that was a rather short video. Uh, thank you, Roy, for suggesting that. Uh, I think I think that's what you're asking. Um, if it wasn't, please leave a comment in, in the, the notes below and uh, let me know. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video and if you want to see more shader videos, then give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below. Uh, if you didn't like the video, thumbs down, but please leave a comment below what can be improved. Um, 
feel free to share on social media. And if you like this video and want timely reminders of when I put a new video up, then uh, hit the old subscribe button, which is, I believe, down there. Uh, right beside that, there's a notification bell. If you hit that, you'll get timely reminders of when I put a new video up and you won't miss a single thing. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.